hello and welcome back and today I want to tell you guys about a little experiment I've been running in the last few days involving the PS5, an SSD and a bunch of different heat sinks and a temperature reader. That's right, just like I mentioned in my other videos, what I've been doing is bench testing the internal heat on this system with no heat sink with the Elu Tang heatsink that I talked about in my other videos, this lovely compact little heatsink that fits beautifully inside this system, and I've been utilizing that giant Sabrent heatsink, the one that fits inside but without putting the top panel on there. And what I've been doing is running heavy write and heavy read operations from within the system and bench testing the temperatures and of course the time they take. And in today's video, I'm going to go through those results with you. Now, I appreciate this is not the most exciting subject in the world. In fact, this has but the potential to be one of the dullest videos I've ever put out here on the channel. But the reason I'm doing it is so, so many of you who are buying SSDs to upgrade your PS5 are buying them and either wondering about what kind of heatsink to buy or wondering whether to get one at all. And if you'd seen my other video where I was basically shouting and swearing, you'll know that I think it is ridiculous to buy an SSD for this system and not put a heatsink. These things are like $10, $20 at a push. And yes, I'm using dollars because I hear that a lot of you are Americans that watch this. So having a heatsink shouldn't be a choice. It should be a question of which heatsink you get, not yes or no. Now, I've got a few bits and bobs about the setup during the course of this. It's worth mentioning a few things. First and foremost, all tests were conducted with the 980 Pro from Samsung. We've got that inside this. It's the same SSD with all three tests. I'm gonna show you on screen at the same time. Also, the temperature read from this dual sensor um, temperature device here, where we plugged it in, we put this sensor device here inside the PS5 um, SSD expansion bay making sure to connect with the SSD. So regardless of whether there's no SSD heatsink or there's a heatsink, we always made sure that within the heatsink, the sensor was always touching a NAND chip on the SSD board, even under the heatsink. Because it was a, all this test is about is knowing the temperature of the NAND on the SSD, not the temperature of the heatsink, the temperature of the SSD inside, which is really, really important. Now, all three were conducted in a contained environment. All of them also featured a second node that gave us a sense of relativity about the external temperature around the device for us to understand a little bit more about the temperatures that, that this is raising. Now, between tests, uh, there was an idle time of 10 minutes between every single test. So, in the, for example, if we were running a test with um, without a heat sink and we were doing heavy write and then heavy read, we would leave 10 minutes in between each operation before continuing with the write. Now, what that meant was the, in, the starting temperature with every one of our tests was slightly different. One of the earliest things we learned was without a heat sink, the idle temperature of that SSD inside with the games and some of the background library data being pulled from it meant that the idle temperature of the SSD without a heat sink started higher. Something you're gonna see in the test later on. But one thing I will add is the write and read operations every single time with or without a heatsink took exactly the same amount of time. Now that doesn't mean that over the days, weeks, months and years that there isn't going to be a degrading effect of temperature on the SSD when it's in operation. But I will say in all of our tests that the read and write operation with or without a heatsink or different kinds of heatsink took the same amount of time. Another interesting thing we learned is much men uh, just mentioned on a few other websites as well, like Digital Foundry, I believe. Um, the internal SSD inside the uh, in the PlayStation here has an incredible sequential read, but it has to be said that its write was definitely slower than that of the Samsung we put inside. Every time we wrote data to the internal SSD, it took longer than repeating the operation coming back. Every one of our operations we did involved moving around 230 gigabytes from the internal PlayStation that's of games onto the SSD. So we were testing the right activity of this SSD. And then after 10 minutes, we would move the data back. And that would be the read activity from the SSD, but also writing to the PlayStation. So it's important to understand that that second operation, more work is being done 
by the PlayStation, okay? So in the second phase, do bear that in mind that we are reading from the SSD because that's not gonna be as intensive and writing to the PlayStation. So don't expect the temperatures to be as high in the second test. The first test is the one where the temperatures are probably gonna rise the most. Um, now, when we performed this test, we had everything laid out. So in the case of the no heat sink setup, and hopefully there's something on screen there, the no heat sink setup was the SSD. We opened up the PlayStation from inside, as I've done on this channel a million times. I removed the lid. I got into that internal expansion bay, and that internal expansion bay was then populated with the Samsung 980 Pro. No heat sink was applied, but then the metal plate was replaced on top, the sensors applied, of course, beforehand, and the lid replaced on there. In the second test, where we ran the Elutang heatsink, again, we, took, we installed the Samsung 980 Pro inside the Elutang, we placed the Elutang heatsink with the SSD inside, and the thermo sensor underneath the heatsink and on the SSD, um, we put that and then replaced the panel and then replaced the lid. That was our second test. The third test was taking advantage of that subrent, that heatsink. Now, this heatsink, as we've mentioned before, is a chunky number. Let's bring that close to camera for you there. It is a big old heatsink there. And with that heatsink, of course, it's too large to go inside with that metal panel on top. And in that case, we installed the bigger heatsink without the metal plate on top. We've still got the thermo sensor inside, but we replaced the plastic um, outer casing there of the PlayStation, and then when we put that on there, we ran our test. So that is the big test here, ladies and gentlemen. Is it going, what are the temperature differences going to be with the heat sink, I'm sorry, the SSD with no heat sink, the SSD with a compact heat sink, with the, both of those other two with the cover on, and third, the larger Sabrent heat sink with no cover on at all, but the plastic lid as well. So we ran those tests, we put them through, and we ran both of them. Now, the right operation, and that was copying from the PlayStation storage and onto the SSDs immediately. I'm sure you can see it there on screen. And we have sped this up, obviously, on screen for the right operation. But straight away, not only was the base temperature of the SSD with no heatsink already higher, but it crept into the 50s so, so, so quickly. Of course, the temperature did rise on the SSDs um, with the Sabren heatsink and the Elutang heatsink, but the fact still remains that there was definitely a difference there. And of course, this is consistent right, so this is always going to be the higher temperature of the two, but still, nonetheless, it was clearly evident there, even early doors and as the test continued, that heavy write operations onto the SSD with no heatsink resulted in a noticeably higher temperature. Remember, these SSDs are designed to operate in 0 to 70 C. However, they are optimal efficiency at under 50 C. And a lot of SSDs, once you surpass the 50 C mark, have a tendency to throttle the SSD work a little bit in the efforts to preserve and maintain the operations of the SSD. So straight away, you could see there on screen that that SSD there, without the heat sink, was the hottest and by a notable margin as well. So from there, we moved on to testing read. Reading, I hate seagulls, um, we tested reading from that SSD. That was reading all of that data back and copying it and moving that data over to the PlayStation 5. Remember, when we move data, there is a sort of element of write because we're erasing data from the SSD as well. But what's really important there is when we move the data back to the PlayStation 5, first and foremost, it took longer. Again, as highlighted, uh, we mentioned earlier on about the speed of the SSD. But again, the temperatures did still continue to rise and there was a noticeable difference when that data was being applied to the PlayStation. And again, not as high as the right activity, which is always gonna make an SSD rise in temperature, but it's worth bearing in mind that in this operation, that SSD is being read from. So in that scenario, when the SSD was being read from, that's what's gonna happen when you're gaming. And when you're going into these giant world games, and there's so much data being pulled from these SSDs, 
that all of that data that's being pulled when you're in a game, in a giant open world game, that's going to be constant read as well. And I think the second test is the one that's a little bit more real world applicable. Yes, it's a lot of data. So it is a very heavy, sustained operation. And it's not quite going to be like that when you play a lot of games. But definitely there's a large amount of either intermittent or sustained read from the SSD on a PlayStation when you're going to be gaming. And I think this test here was the one that showed that the temperature is going to continue to rise. It peaked at one point, and you can definitely see the difference between the block data and the small intermittent multimedia data there from the YouTube and the Amazon and Netflix apps there that we transferred over. But again, there was clearly a distinction. And let's be upfront. Through all three tests, the one that maintained the best core temperature in all three tests was the Sabrent. The Sabrent was the one that actually managed to maintain the best temperature. Now, this is obviously an isolated example. It doesn't open the door to what about this assisted block of heat within the system and air circulating with the internal fans of the PlayStation. Does that change things internally? So it's very hard to make a judgment call on that. I would argue that having that temperature cooler on that storage, it's not, you know, that setup with that um, SSD heatsink being visible is very, very similar to that of a PC where the heatsink lives on a motherboard and it isn't caged in. It's in an open air environment within that case with air flowing through. However, that. As, as true as that might be, it has to be factored in that the dynamics of the PlayStation's build internally and the fan vents, there's probably a lot of architecture that's gone into that cooling system, both passive, semi-passive and active, that can't be overlooked. And therefore, as much as the heatsink worked, it's still very hard to 100% recommend it. Personally, I am using a heatsink. I'm using the Sabren heatsink inside my own PlayStation. But again, that doesn't mean it's fully certified and compatible. I'm merely telling you that these tests were enough to convince me that it was an okay thing to do. But you've got to make up your own mind. But this has been the difference between heat sinks and ultimately the difference of the internal performance of your PS5 when it's being utilized in heavy write, heavy read, and how these heat sinks help things out. I'm going to end the video now. I'm going to go upstairs and absolutely hammer those seagulls. But for now, thank you so much for watching this. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, I've got more videos coming up with the bench testing comparisons of my final SSDs. I will see you next time.